Greetings and welcome, everyone. It's All You Can Geek Gamecast, episode 525. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Gass, joined by Mike Sneedy. What's up? Corey Feinsud. Happy holidays. And Tony Korkanakis. Hi, diddly ho. Welcome, guys. Welcome, listeners and viewers to 525 of the Gamecast. We are in the thick of it with Cyberpunk. Uh, <laughs> it never stops every, now. Every week. It's the we gift that keeps this, on giving. We, we can just keep going with this thing. So we're going to get into Cyberpunk in just a minute, it's, guys. It's but, funny uh, that you mention it because I just like to lean in to um, what we've been up to. So I literally went to Target. I had my copy. Again, got it for 40 whatever dollars because it was buy two, get one free at Target sale. Never opened it because I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait for whenever I get my PS5 and the updates come out. But then because of all this stuff, I was like, you know what? I can't in good conscience even keep this copy and give them my money, so I'm just going to return this. So when I went to Target, and I was like, here's here's the receipt, you know, here's everything. I just like to return this. She goes, oh, is there something wrong with it? Instinctively, I was like, yeah, the game's just broken. And she like kind of looked up at me. I was like, oh. And I was like, I like went on for like one minute. I was like, yeah, it's all over the news. It's just a big mess, like. They rush it out, it doesn't work, crashes your system, this and the other thing. So I just don't want it. She's like, I don't blame you. I'm like, why did I just tell this random girl at Target? <laughs> it was just instinctual. I was just like, fuck this game, fuck this studio, fuck everything about it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of shit we're going to get into with them. Uh, we've been doing it for the last few weeks, and uh, we're definitely going to cover more of it. Um, so other games that we've you know, played, though, I've been up to, is uh, i got to lead us off. I've, st- I've gotten more into 13 Sentinels. Uh, and t- Tony, it, it, is this like nine nine nine? Is this what I'm getting into here? Man, this is like I keep playing this game now, and I'm like, like the game just opened up more. It's uh, yeah, and it's just I get into like it is a thread upon thread upon thread upon thread. I'm like, I know this game. Like I've played, I've done this, I've lived this uh, multiple times. So uh, and you know, and I just. You know the combat's fine. Like I'm, I'm actually playing the, the I'm playing the, um, the combat. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, but yeah, I'm playing casual though, because I'm just fuck it. I, I oh, want this. This is this game is a story. The combat's yeah. nothing to write home about. It's just like this is about that story. And I got I love this presentation. Like I, I finally got into um the the branching area, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do next? Do I want to go for combat or there's stuff for story you can go back and you know relive some certain things i'm just like what do i do and and then i'm like okay you can see the branching stories i'm like this is this is like 999 i think <laughs> i think yeah i don't I mean, know this the, is the structure the structure is definitely uh parallels 999 in that there's a lot of branching points in the story there's a lot of uh scenes you can revisit uh you could replay everything yes um but the cool thing you'll see is that um the game has a built-in database or encyclopedia or whatever they call it, archive, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. And it keeps track of the different characters, the different locations, the items, the mechs, this and the other thing. And as you go through the story, those will get updated with newer things. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just telling you, whatever you think is going on with anybody, just... You're wrong. Again, it's, one of those, yeah, it's one of those things where if I told you to write down what any of your expectations are for this series or any of these characters and then you read it after you beat the game you would laugh it would be one of those things like all right whatever like sure i I, i'm actually psyched to get through this now more like um yeah yeah. it was fine in the beginning like what i was going through with the prologue and i'm just like that's cool you're like okay yeah yeah, it's fine i'm like i get i get the appeal for this and then it split out to this um i'm I'm obviously just getting into uh juro juro i'm playing yeah, I'm just playing. I've all I've restarted his stuff like over and over and over again to play more into the threads, and um, that's what I'm doing right now. And I and I played some combat stuff to kind of open up more because you play combat, you open up more things. Yeah, right? yeah. So there will be some point. I'm where trying it's to like keep it vague as, as, yeah, as yeah. possible. But yeah, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'll be talking more about that. I'm sure next week. Is it very? Is it super long or no? No, I mean you could probably beat it. 20 hours, I'd 20 say. 20 hours? I'm thinking I mean, again, gonna be, yeah, so, so combat is fine like, if you play in casual. There's absolutely no difference. Like, there's no trophy thing. There's no story yeah, unlocks yeah. if you play in hard. It just... Honestly, like, for me, I kind of liked it because I like tower defense types of games. So yeah. I did play on the hardest difficulty. But, like, honestly, unless you're into it, don't. You don't need to. In casual, you can just be like, whatever, I'll deploy my mechs and just hmm. let them do shit and stuff like that. So, yeah. But no, no, this, the story and the graphics, because that's the thing is like that game is just yeah. so fucking beautiful. It's an anime. Every time you get it's one an of those like yeah. scenes where it's just like, wow, this is 
you know, just art. Literally, the vanilla wear, man. Yeah. Awesome. Just the, the one guy's like, this is going to sound really weird for those listening, but the one guy's like, just his living room, like with a TV and stuff in there. And, um, my background? Yeah. Can't see yes, it. Your back- just... Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, totally can't totally see it? That's right. I'm sorry. That was Tony because we're in a gathering mode right here, together mode. Gotcha. Uh, but yes, Tony's for the last few weeks. Just that, just that, that area. I'm like, this is so like in depth. Like, what's here? Like, it's crazy. What's back there? So, I don't know. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So that's pretty much it. Some more Hades, but not. I haven't beaten the game yet. So I've, I've been focusing more on like um, I'm going to do 13 Sentinels. Finish that. I can see myself finishing Hades though before the end of the year, and then I'm, then I'm pretty well caught up with what I want to think about for game of the year. So, um, because Cyberpunk is just. It's not of this year. It's not of this year. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Early access. <laughs> um, Corey, what do you think? Um, mostly Last of Us 2, actually. Oh, That's wow. Got nice. a seven hours, maybe eight, uh, eight hours, maybe of it. Uh, and yeah, I really, I'm really, really liking it. It's the storytelling is really, really done well in this, and playing the narrative as well as you know being a part of it, I think they've they've done a good job of making that um, impactful and special. And there is a moment in this like that you could potentially miss that um, I I didn't miss obviously, and I was like, wow, this is this is a one of the best moments in like a video game I've seen in a long, long time. It was really cool. And then I know Mike, last time we talked, like I was like, Oh, I haven't seen it where like there's infected and there's like human villains or whatever. I was, I was guys. Asking you if they have that, yeah. And there is full moments in this that you can do that. And you can actually, you know, shepherd the infected into them as well. So that they now have oh, to good. fight those guys See, like as well. That. And good. you can just kind of run away and have them deal yeah. with them. So it was pretty neat. And there's a point where you actually have to do that. It's not, you don't have to, but they highly encourage you. Um, like you're kind of in like this tight space and the people are like searching for you. And then someone goes, oh shit, there's a clicker. And then you can just kind of throw a bottle at their feet and then the clickers will just run them down and then they have to fight them and stuff. So it was really neat, neat moments. And like I said, it's been, it, it, it's one of those games where I actually like after I'm done playing with it, I was like, I keep thinking about it and like thinking on what's happened, where it's going. Like I, I, I've said, I don't know the entire, um, you know, spoiler stuff stories. I guess all three of you guys know what the whole storyline is probably about and stuff, but I don't know that. And so it's interesting finding that out and it's making it seem like, uh, there is a third faction like that is, the villain of this game potentially like that I've, we haven't really seen much of but all they keep talking about is this other faction right now and it's like they're like stringing people up and like murdering them like pretty awful things and it's, it's interesting how um like you're finding you're trying to go out for this justice which again none of these people are good people these are not good people at all like joel is not a good person That's, yeah uh ellie's not a good person like uh, the people you're looking for are not good people it's like None like, in this world, uh, there are no good people because they're just dead. Uh, and so it's uh, it's interesting to see where it's going. But um, I have to say, like, I don't know. Like, I know, Tony, you mentioned your uh, brother playing. And once they killed off Joel, it was kind of and this happens kind of early in the game. So spoilers or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like Jeez. people are done. I mean, like, I like, think everyone knows but, by now that that happens. Yeah. It's like. I don't know. I don't really care that they do that. It's like, that's not like that guy kind of deserved it. And like, he wasn't a good person, but he's I would, the Luke Skywalker, I would, dude. I would still disagree. It's not the Luke Skywalker. On so Last of Us, he's definitely the Luke Skywalker. I, I, no, I it's disagree. Really. It's like Clementine. Like, Clementine is the star at of that point Walking in the game. Dead. But at that point in the game, I, see, I, I have a lot of. No, I'm not going to go. No, <laughs> so I'm not so gonna, you're, you're actually I'm upset that they killed Joel? I don't. I no, do not. Dis- I do not care that they killed Joel. I I oh. care about the way that they made you do that with a character you don't give a fuck about at that point. You don't kill Joel. No, I understand that, but you you have to take the control of that character right after and play as them. No. I yeah. I thought I thought you did. Isn't that what it is? No. What? Oh. You take. You don't do that. I thought no, it was like, right after. Is it not right after? Oh, well, you. No, no, you take control before, and then he saves okay. your life, and then everything after that is, you know. Yeah. So, so how do you, you could say he deserved that after he saved that character's life? 
I mean, he's murdered. You've murdered so many people. Like, so? So I, I think, I mean, as far as, like, for me personally, like, I was like, well, okay, well, he got he got his. Like, everybody's going to get theirs at some point. Uh, and the, for me, this so. story is more about, you know, the relationship and obviously and Ellie and stuff. And, you again, you get to see more. Like, I, you know, we saw in the trailers, Joel's not gone. Gone. Like, we'll see more of Joel. It's not like... Force ghost. It's dead. I was but thinking, then, Mike, I don't want to say it. It's just interesting. Like, if that, if, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's what made people upset or not. But that, to me, is like, well, that, or, like, this is this is that world. Like, I'm telling it's, you, it's, it's exactly it's not, Luke Skywalker thing. It's, 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 not, the, it's exactly. not the only thing. I'll say that much. No, well, that's what I'm saying. Too. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very curious to see where it goes because 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 I think going in, everyone expected Joel to die at some point in this story. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, he's, and like we even you know, he's thought, over fifty, so you know, thought, you can't write anything about a character already, over fifty. Yeah, but- I actually thought the character was already dead when this when this ma- game was being made. I thought that was going to be like the twist where he's actually already been killed. Um, but you know, whatever. Yeah. No, it's, and like again, like the storytelling. There's there's some stuff that you find. Like there's a lot of notes and like and stuff like that that you can read. And uh, there's a journal that you write in. Um, and so all that stuff is really really well done. I thought. And again, I'm really enjoying it. And again, I don't know if you know. I don't have a problem with. The Joel thing at, at all, so that didn't bother I mean, me. I mean, I, I don't well, either. I don't either. It's just no. I know that's how people reacted. Like it was the news when it got leaked and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, geez. there were people that were just up in arms. Like, no, I mean, know. we were like that. That's the only logical reason for her to be doing what she's doing. So no, I know. I mean, we call. I'm just saying. I'm just saying the people that don't follow the news hype cycle as much as we do. Right, or, right. Or think about this kind of stuff. Like again, my brother was just like, "Oh, they're making The Last of Us Two. Cool." And doesn't doesn't care, doesn't want want to watch the trailer or anything. He just wants to see it when it comes out. He yeah. just wants to play it when it comes out. But the instant that happened, he's like, "Now nah, fuck this." I mean, <laughs> like, so I think you could expect that. I think the how early in the story it is and how pointless it kind of is. Not pointless. It's the catalyst for this entire game. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Well. I, it's not like he sacrificed himself for anything, though. Again, in this universe, in this world, like you're gonna get got. Like at some point, it's gonna happen. So I don't know, and that's why I think the brutality part of it, and then you have these other moments, like the beautiful moments, like that. The dr- the drastic difference between them is really that striking, kind of- and it makes it like it's like wow. There's there's these moments that are just like crazy, where it's. It has much more want, impact because of that. So yeah, I, I just yeah, I just have a problem with playing it. But I just never mind. I have a big problem. That's fine. Like you don't have to. I'm just making I, you. Ah, it's preachy. It's, I'm sorry. It's fucking preachy. I'm not gonna get into it. I it's don't just know fucking about preachy. that. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I think, no, hold on. You're no, not. You're not. No. Stop. Just stop. No. Just stop talking to him. You're gonna screw something up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about I'm it when Corey I'm beats it. Right, I'm just like because it's funny because like you guys know the story. You haven't played the game, so it's just like. I could I could go from A to D to Z and nope. be like no I'm but. curious uh, that's why I'm that makes me more interested in playing it too to find out because yeah, yeah. again you guys are just basing this solely on story beats so and not yeah. gameplay well, elements well, to or me like again to me like The Last of Us especially the first one like it's all about the story the game itself was eh. mm-hmm. so like if the story oh, is story. is not that something story. that yeah that's sort of the point of The Last of Us for me at yeah. least. So if the story is something that seems kind of like, eh, do I really want to do, you do feel that? Like, I mean, I don't want to play it. You're taking moments out of context, though, like because you're not experiencing them in the way that they're meant to be experienced. Nah, possibly. I mean, I'm sure there's more I could like about it than what I know. I'm sure that there's stuff that I would like for sure. I'm sure there's even gameplay moments I would like. And, the, you know, moment to moment, there'd be great stuff to find. But I know the overall arc, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's I mean, everybody's. That's my thing. That's my thing too. But I, right. I, I just think that you know, I, I'm curious to see how it goes because again, it could be like a whole massive I'm curious. thing. I don't know, but we'll see. I'm curious to have a conversation with you when this is over. Yeah. Uh, so we could do a right, spoiler um, cast. <laughs> we could. A spoiler. I, like to I don't. I, I'm so. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm so tired of the conversation about this game, honestly. Like, I, I'm glad some some one of us is getting to play it, but I really don't want to ever talk about this game. 
again. Wow. <laughs> like, I didn't know you felt that strongly, Mike. No, I, I mean, I've I just, feel like we only talked about it a little bit when it got leaked. And no, then I mean, we didn't really it's, talk it's about not, it. At it's all. not even. It's not even me. I'm talking about. Like oh, I've listened like, to like everyone else like, talk okay. about it. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just so tired of the conversation. Well, about it. I'm enjoying it tremendously. Like, I'm, yeah. happy no, I'm happy for you that you're enjoying it, Corey. Good, good. Um, who is up here? Tony, did you go? What I've been playing. Oh, uh, yeah. So I picked up Yakuza Zero again because uh, right. with Cyberpunk not doing it, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit um, Yakuza because I, I wasn't playing it at the ideal time. I was playing it like late at night, and I I didn't realize how this game like some of those cutscenes are long, and it just is one of those things where I, like if I'm like tired, I'll just like kind of like close my eyes and it's like, well, that's it, that's over, and like I'm just like. I have no idea what's going on. So I started playing it earlier, like, after, like, working out or after work and stuff like that. So I'm enjoying a lot more. Um, I want to say I'm halfway through the game, or, or just a little bit before halfway through the game, but enjoying the absurdity of, like, just the gameplay and the side stories. Like, <laughs> like the story tries to take itself, like, pretty seriously with the main characters, mm-hmm. but then any time you have anything to do with the side stories, it's just, like... <laughs> One of the most recent ones I did was, like, I had to teach this um, uh, dominatrix how to be a dominatrix. <laughs> and just, like, you're feeding her lines of, like, what to say and stuff like that. And just, like, all right. Or, like, um, you're this uh, Yakuza that's being punished, so you have to manage a cabaret. And um, uh, you go to infiltrate this other cabaret, and you're scoping it out. And all of a sudden, you see this dude in his underwear, like, dancing with himself. And you're just like, what the fuck is this? And it's like, this man, this this lust he's exuding. It's like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, that's that's weird. Uh, but it's just so zany and, and totally, totally, like, just out of left field Japanese. And, and that's awesome. I love it. And the story, just, like, hardcore, like, Yakuza, like, yeah, you got into some bad shit. And you need to get your way out of it and stuff like that. So it's really cool. I'm enjoying it. Um, the combat's starting to open up. I just got into the property management, like I know, uh, Mike, you talked about a lot, yeah. um, where I'm just like, oh, I gotta, like, fucking chase off these motherfuckers so I can make some goddamn money here. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> funny, because in that game, more than the ones I follow, I think of the, like, handful of that I play, that's it's probably the best overall, but in this one, you have the most, there's... A, most stuff to do there's the most variety as far as like your skill tree and the combat and the three you have have multiple styles i don't know how many you have so far but each or something like that yeah there's there's three main styles each for each character so that's a lot and but money you need so much money to upgrade all your shit in that game and but it's also kind of it's not it is kind of infinite too like in that game i like that you gamble for money directly as opposed to prizes that you can exchange, which happens in later ones, which is kind of annoying to me. Oh, yeah. So, so, but yeah, you just, you just want to make constant money. And eventually and with your, uh, your job, you can make kind of a lot of money at once. So you Yakuza. actually want it's not even Yakuza jobs. I'm talking about cabaret management and like <laughs> real estate. <So>. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just, uh, that's what I love about it. It's just, like, again, the absurdity of it. Like, even the character, because uh, there's two main characters. There's uh, Kiryu, uh, Kiryu and um, me. Majima. Majima, yeah, yeah. And so Kiryu, like, he uh, ousts himself from the Kusa. He asks for to be pardoned, something like that. And immediately after, he's like, oh, well, you could just do property management. It's like, what the fuck? Like, he even says, like, uh, property management. And they're like, yeah, you'll be fine. Like, we'll, we'll teach you and stuff like that. Uh, and I just learned this move where, like, you just see this rich guy, and he's about to get mugged, and he's like, I don't have time for this. So this rich guy just takes out a wad of cash and just throws it in the air just walks by because everybody's trying to get the money. And then you talk to him afterward. He's like, yeah, let me teach you how to do it. Here's some money. And literally just throw money in the air, and NPCs and potentially enemies will just go after the money instead. And I'm just like, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> like I don't know when that really is going to be relevant for me ever in the, in the gameplay. But like, I just think it's absurd. Um, it's for what, whenever you don't feel like dealing with those random street encounters, you yeah. just do it with someone else. You just do that. If you want to waste the money so you don't have yeah. to fight them, that's pretty much what it's for. Yeah. It's just, it's absurd though. And like, they talk about it and they're like, yeah, like, t- like people say time is money and they're fucking with you because time is finite and money is infinite. And so like, I'm like, <laughs> can't argue that logic. I really, really can't. <laughs> That's all I got. So it's just it's it's really good. Nice. Um, 
I'm glad I'm, I'm diving into it. It's one of those things that we're like, I'm enjoying this one. And I know, Mike, you had, because I think this one was a later one, because it's obviously like a prequel for the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of, even though I'm not finished this one, I'm like hesitant to go through the entire series then, because I think like the regression of like gameplay or quality of life will like um, be a, uh, you know, sticking point and stuff like that. So, well, so now, so now I understand that uh, this is it is kind of like if you do the Kiwami ones, Kiwami and Kiwami two, like those do follow afterwards and they expand. You know, they kind of keep the in, quality of life stuff. Yeah, they keep that. Now, when if if and when I get to play the uh, remastered collection of three, four, and five, we'll see what happens. Going back yeah. to those, and then uh, six is newer, and then thing or two, uh, I think, like a dragon after that. Yeah. Which is the newest game. I think the Dragon's supposed to be really good, too. It's yeah, I mean, that's I, what I heard. I'm actually, I actually might go for I know it's turn-based, which is not my thing, but I might even try that. I'm not sure, though, but I might get into that one, too, it's, eventually. It's hitting a lot of that's, the... Uh, of that's the, the one... Yeah. That's the one they were, like... They were in love with... Um, what's the role-playing game that um, Dragon Ball guy animated? Um, Dragon Quest? Is it Dragon Quest? Yeah, the Dragon Quest games. That's very much modeled after the Dragon Quest games, isn't it? Like they made it because they were huge fans of Dragon Quest. Isn't that the game? Like not very much, but they were inspired by Dragon Quest when they made that game. Something like that. I thought. I, I, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, I mean it could be. I just think it's awesome that uh, the wheel come like the action thing comes up and it spells out Sega because a fan actually yeah. pointed out. He's like, if you just change this word to I don't know equipment or whatever, it's like it spells out Sega or something like that. And I'm like. Good on you, man. Good on you. So, uh, yeah, that's basically what I've been playing. Yeah. All right, uh, Mike, what have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing uh, Justice, which is a spinoff. Same same city, Camarucho. Um, judgment? or Judgment, sorry. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm to the point where I'm kind of mopping up the side quests now. I'm I'm kind of on the last legs of this one. I I don't know if I'm gonna go super completionist with it or not. I'll, I might, uh, but uh, you know. So uh, it's only the zany stuff left for me now. Uh, the main story is done, um, and uh, this one is a. Uh, it doesn't have like because your job as a private detective is to pretty much to do side quests, so you don't have like a different job in this one, um, which is it's all right, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, it's still fun, and I'm still I'm gonna just continue to play it for a bit here, because I don't know if I'm gonna get any other open world game anytime soon. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean yeah. I like the fact that it's like open city versus open world. Yeah, no, it's it's, like, it's it's pretty condensed. It's not like you know, it's nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jim, I think you might like this a bit because, like, yeah. to me, it feels like the spiritual successor to Shenmue, in like well, combat. It, is. <laughs> it is it is the spiritual right, i just couldn't right, get into it before it's such a crazy game i'm just like i, I don't know i, I tried it and i just and um, yeah because six i tried it's like uh i don't know it's like crazy i actually when i was playing uh zero i really liked um the smaller city what was the, the one city, city what was it i don't i, I forgot. forget yeah because that's like the smaller city i actually like that better because i could figure it out a little more and like farm certain characters in in that city i don't know if you've done anything like that yet but the sleep or um shakedown mr shakedown yeah yeah i mean the, the shakedown like i heard that's how you get a lot of money is but that's that's the money know. but like he's also a big threat too like a lot of what you you deal with in that game is like sort of shakedown management <laughs> <laughs> shakedown, man. i can see that because like the thing is i only encountered him in the look the tutorial where you're like supposed to lose the fight but they're like, oh, watch out for Mr. Shakedown. Like, if he beats you, he's going to take all your money. I'm like, well, where is he? I haven't seen him once. So I don't know if he's, like... So, th- at- so that's why I like that smaller city, because you can kind of... It kind of... Most of it is, like, a circle, more or less, around the yeah, river. Yeah, yeah, So if you just run that a bit, you'll you'll run into you'll a find them. Okay. And <laughs> what, what styles did you use for each character? Um, well, it depends on what you have unlocked, but... Uh, I mean, you're supposed to, you're supposed to go back and forth a bit, depending yeah. on what you want to do. Um, for shakedown, I did the quick this the quick style with a uh, Kiru most of the time on his version. The rush rush style, yeah. Rush. Uh, for Majima, I did. Break, break dancing seems so fucking OP. 
for yeah, Breaker. Pe- people really like Breaker. It's kind of out of control, so I didn't love it, but it's it's really good. Yeah. Um, I don't remember his other one. Brawler was his default, and then oh, I use the bat thing a lot. The bat. Okay. Got because it. if if you if you if you tie the bat one to um having a lot of the stamina or whatever it was called, special pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You can all have like an automatic heat action just standing next to anyone at all times. Oh, you, interesting. With the bat, so the, I kind of cheese that a little bit when I play that game. Cool. All right. All right, guys. Uh, Cyberpunk still happening out in the world, um, unfortunately. unfortunately. So sense more sense developments that. from last week's podcast where we were talking about it being completely broken. Uh, Sony and Microsoft. Well, Sony has delisted it from the micro, uh, yeah. from their own store. And Microsoft has been offering full refunds for the game if you ask for one. Uh, So there's that. And now I think they released numbers today. That's why I linked the one article. Um, They released numbers saying 13 million with refunds still. That's impressive for a game that is completely broken on two two consoles. Yeah. There's there's, there's a lot more of them out there, man. There's a little bit bit of a caveat caveat here. Like, it's not really completely broken. It's just bad. And although... I don't know, because people are going back and forth now. There's a lot of – there's talk coming, like, the other way. I see it happening now. There's this wave of people being like, this is some media, like, uh, like judgment. Well, I mean, like, like, I've so seen pictures old. and images and, and video. Like, oh, it's well, yeah, broken. Can, it's that, broken. That happens with every game, though, too. Though. There, that does happen here and there. But there's, there's this new groundswell, and it is a lot – a lot of PC players too, just being like, "Oh, they're just slandering this game. I don't know why." You know, the journalists teamed up, to, and it's like, "All right, it's probably somewhere in the middle." In reality, there, I, mean, I think got eighty six on Metacritic, PC for, only for the PC. Right, yes. right. Uh, I'm curious about what would happen on my PS Pro. I'm not sure. I've heard that that's it's playable, just not pretty. So I'm going to say this, Mike. Right now, is you don't want to play this game on this generation consoles. You don't. You don't. I, so save yourself. There's save absolutely yourself. no benefit, and that like that was the thing. Is like I well, watched the Digital this, Foundry breakdown, and they're like, absolutely do not play it on the base systems at all. Either one of them. They're like PS4 Pro. If you really wanted to, you could, but like honestly, either wait for the improvement patches next, or just wait yeah. until you get a next gen system. And it was one of the things where like you know what, I am still interested in playing the game at some point in time, but. Like, there, there's no benefit to playing it right now. And and the thing is, like, I don't know. I, I understand your point of, like, that uh, a lot of these games and these open-world games, like, I mean, I played every new Fallout game on day one, except for 76. Um, and But there's a certain level of expectation of jank, I guess, and bugs where I'm like, oh, that's, that, that's funny or something like that. Like, yeah. You know, whatever. But, like, this, it's just, like, game-breaking so, or, like, so really the, ridiculous the thing is, performance like, issues. Yeah. So, so I, I wouldn't performance drops here and there. Like it's like eh, as long as it's not so the 15s, which apparently it can be. It, it is. It's but, in single digits too. Like in single digits as well. I think that's only on the base consoles. But yeah, um, <laughs> I've heard that the single digits and watch the digital PC. Factory. Just watch the yeah. digital factory. It's bad. Go on. But but I mean, yeah, the big things are the ones that prevent progress or crashes over and over again. Yeah, which theory of which they actually announced. On Thank one of their you. forums, things that like yeah. try to limit the, your inventory size to reduce. Now, like, now, now, is this a PC you, only one? Because this is a different, a different thing. Is this a PC only one where it, apparently it can't be more than like 800 megabytes your save, or else your save will become corrupt forever? Yes, it. Um, no, because it happens on the. No, it was happening on the PlayStation consoles as well, where the game was getting corrupt. Their saves were getting so, corrupt. So it was on console as well. So, as far that. as I'm aware, I didn't hear about it on the Xbox console, but I know on the PlayStation it had a problem, and I know for a fact on the PC that they're basically that. telling you your game will get corrupted. Yeah, and so and so this is what worries me more. Not well, yes and no, because I know of. I don't know for sure, but I feel eventually either the next gen systems will become available. Or, or they'll patch everything to make the last gen playable. But I'm I'm a little worried about a lot of the underneath because the game they they said something along the lines of mod I guess said something along the lines like you're not you're playing the game wrong you're supposed to like replay it a bunch. I'm like now wait a minute I thought this was gonna be like the most content rich single player experience ever. I don't want like an outer worlds thing where 
you play it over and over again. I want to like be one character and get broken and do everything. Like, and I don't. So that worries me a little bit more about what how the game is actually designed. Because I, well, I, I think it's not. Like, not what you're going to get your wish as far as being broken. Like you will get broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. no, I I think like what to your guys' points is like the only thing that you're going to get. Uh, by playing this now is to experience these bugs and to have potential problems going in the future where if you wait you could you know have a yeah. better experience quality of life you know potentially and not have to risk and this is like, also giving having them, the game this is also giving, progress yeah. this is also giving them faith that they're going to have these patches ready by january february because uh the other thing i started hearing about now is the fact that how did they launch these these games on the PlayStation Network and the Xbox Live service? Because uh, they're supposed to get tested by Microsoft and Sony where these games would have gotten rejected for these bugs. And that's what the investors are asking on the investors call. There's an investor lawsuit about to happen. Yes, the that's the other they're, they're, thing. Yes. The, the, the investors were asking how this game got listed with these bugs in there. And there is no excuse for it except for they ask for a waiver from microsoft and sony now what a waiver does for these games and this happens a lot apparently is they can apply to get a waiver and say listen we are aware that this is here we understand it breaks the game but by this date we are going to have a patch that fixes it which it's probably what happened with that original delay and they still didn't fix it like they didn't fix these problems which means they're in violation and this is how probably sony delisted the game they're in violation of the network uh the, the policies because these... they were getting so many refund requests and they couldn't really do them so they yeah. just took it off well there's that but i think obviously they they they, they kind of broke a whole like uh you know under you know it's it's like a rule essentially they broke a courtesy thing that you know an honor system where you know you give this promise you're going to have this fix and these companies give you this like leeway and say okay we'll let you guys release it here on our systems and they didn't do it so is this going to cause problems for other people that have that same issue now is this going to is this going to extrapolate out to other games now that we don't have these this issue happening like what what rabbit hole is happening now where are they going to have a hard time now releasing games on time like we already have a hard time doing that so so you think there that like sony and microsoft won't trust that people will yeah, I think you have to patch goals I think now. You have to, yeah, I think you have to revise that policy to say, listen, I, we can't accept a game unless you tell us it's ready to go now. Like, and if you're going to list it on our store, so we have to review it, it has to be the one that we're going to be posting. Not to say, it, these day one patches of 50 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes, it, it can't be promised anymore. It has to be there before they certify in their stores. How many how many hot hot fixes have they had already, too? They've had at least two already, didn't they? It's on the fourth fourth revision now they're on oh four they're on oh four right now yeah so uh, it is it is broken it is disappointing um and there's so much mess to be fixed you know, i mean i and just it's don't see how they're gonna do it by february i think that by next next fall this could be a pretty good game i just don't see how they're gonna do this by february like i just don't i don't know except for more crunch i mean i, I six day I, work again right? i am curious about like you know what the how it's going to actually be like after a few of these hot fixes or not. But um, if it is to the point where it's just visual bugs, we'll see by February. That's something I, I guess. watched. I watched a video. I watched a video on YouTube where a guy was uh, <laughs> driving an armored car. Oh, by the way, the AI in this game is hilarious. That's another thing. If so, you so, park see, your that's, car, that's if you park your car. stuff that I'm worried about that underneath all the bugs is the game. Like, cause it's now obscured a little this bit. Is, I know it got like, problem. It got nines, but underneath everything, like, this is a game, because you can't tell anymore if, like, the actual so, base game is good anymore. Let me let me tell you this story. If you're driving your car in the street and you stop your car suddenly in front of, like, in the line in the street and you just get out to do whatever you're going to do, the cars behind you don't have the AI in them to pull around you. They will line up forever behind you and just sit there uh, waiting for you to get back to your car. They're very no cautious traffic. drivers. Very cautious. <laughs> uh, that's where they are with this AI in this game. Uh, it's uh, it's not there. It's not there. It's not programmed in. It's just not, it's not finished. It's unfinished entirely. It's not finished. They or did they this to get this game out. Was important. They got this game out to try to make a bonus. Is what happened, and it's fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. Like this is for a company that I thought was completely different than what we're seeing. I, it's just it's un it's unbelievable. Like it, it's just. Yeah. Well, well, I no, mean, it, it like is cost. Fuck CD Projekt Red. 
fuck CD Projekt Red. I think we can safely say that. We've done this on the podcast before. I yeah. think we can throw that one out there right now. No, absolutely. I mean, it, it's just amazing to me how the turnaround from them being like a new up and coming. Yeah, they were the, they were major, the darling, the darlings yeah. of the industry. Yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, it was easy to root for them around like Witcher Three. You know, like they yeah. were all about the consumer. They're all about like, hey, like, uh, here's the game. Content, the game is is content, content yeah. rich. We here's the DLC that we have planned. So you know everything and all that DLC. Arguably, some of the best DLC content from all time. I, I haven't personally experienced that, but that is the common uh, word online. Is that it's oh, even better than the, the game? Like, right. Yeah, the, the two DLCs to Witcher Three are comparable to the main game, which is crazy. Yeah. So it's just amazing to me that in the span of that time period, five years, right, or whatever it is now, that they could just flip their script and just be like, you know what? You know what we should do? We should fuck over our fans. We should just <laughs> again, completely fuck them over. Th- this is, again, it's, it's the hype cycle. Like, it got to them. I really think. You announced this eight years ago. You try to build it up. Everyone is, again, expecting the most content-rich game of all time. And they're like, oh, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Well, I mean, it's also, like, the history. Like, you've seen, like, they, they've done it. Like, they showed you they could do it with The Witcher, but that, yeah. that's but what people expected. So They expected more than the witcher that is the problem like and but the fact that people knew about this for so long and they were really only developing in earnest for like maybe five of those eight years and they just felt the pressure i think once because you know they delayed three times recently they got death threats they're like screw it there's no way we're going to do this after christmas so and they switched it up they're like oh look these new gen systems we can we can make all this easy and but then I forgot, you know, the systems that it was originally designed for, and they just I think they fell victim to their own hype, and Absolutely. they 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 couldn't. I I don't know if this game wasn't announced eight years ago. If it happens like this, if this game was announced like a year or two ago, I don't think this happens like this. No, I, I don't. It, yeah. it probably would, it wouldn't be out now. Probably it'd probably be out in another year or so, but. This wouldn't have happened, and people wouldn't hate CJ Project Red now after loving them for the better part of a decade. So yeah, it's just, no, it's it's, it's, I mean, it's this disappointing. Is like, this is uh, unprecedented too, because like the fact that the I mean, just we didn't count the number of errors and and people and corporations they've wronged, but like the fact that they turned their fans or the angry uh, customers. And we're like, hey, go to Sony and go to Microsoft before the, either of them were like even aware of like, hey, like what the fuck is going on here? It's just like they're getting bombarded and Sony responds with like, you know what? We're just going to straight up delist your game. Like I don't remember that ever happening across yeah. PS3, PS4. I was shocked when I saw that posted on Twitter. I was like, holy shit. Like they're actually delisting a game that happened. They're just, they're delaying it, a launch. It's got to be the, val- the, the, the volume of the requests yeah, for it, refunds. When, when was yeah. the last time a launched game got delayed? Yeah, and not to mention that too, but like, I mean, there's a subsect of people online that were like, w- demanded the refund, and then when obviously Sony revoked the license, they're like, why can't I play the game anymore? Like, we just <laughs> gave you a refund. Like, what, do you, a, what a, do you think happens this here? Is, this is, you know, you know, entitled gamer problems there. Uh, also, can can the PC gamers who actually have a high-end PC and having a good time with this game not just shut up for a bit? Like, I, I, I really do not want to hear... I'm just like, oh, what, eight-year-old uh, hardware, you, you what peasants, do you, what do you expect? It's like, no, like, this game, it was advertised as available for this. We don't really have a next-gen version yet. It was something, whatever, I just, yeah. I, I, see, it, it's stuff like this that if I had the time and money to become a PC gamer, I still wouldn't, just to be not yeah. a PC gamer. Yeah. Fuck you guys. No, I'm telling you, Mike. <laughs> next year, we at some point we're gonna get actual next gen. They're already saying next gen actual proper versions of this game being launched. Only next gen only versions of it. Sure. So, so you just gotta get all the next gen. By the time this game is out functional, of the hands. By the time this game is functional, then just go buy the right next gen. Wait well, for the, it. Is what I'm saying. Well, the other like, thing is they, they do give you the option to get that for free though when you have the old version. Yeah. So yeah. it's not yeah. it's but, not like a, something you can't get out of. If you yeah, have to pick I one get up, that. But. I get that. So, all right. 
I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Cyberpunk Garbage. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. <laughs> you can write us on geek at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. On Twitter, guys, if you're watching this on Twitter, like the like this, subscribe. Uh, comment, please. We'd love to hear from you, your experiences with glitches because they're hilarious if you watch them on YouTube. Um, follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. We'll see you guys next week. We have another Merry podcast Christmas, coming. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah. Happy, uh, happy holidays. So, thanks.